there was poop on the floor like right by the door to where you open the door and it would catch under the door and it would like smear when you open it. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be part two in my little horror story time series of just roommate and apartment the horror stories and before we get into the video make sure you give it a thumbs up if you enjoy it and stay subscribed to my channel i upload new videos every friday so make sure you ring the bell down below so that you don't miss any time i upload a video now if you didn't see part one i will link it down below it's uh, the horror story of when my roommates had a loud party and I had to call the cops. So if you've already seen that video, then you know that I was already having some issues with my roommates. So this is just a continuation of that. Now, just to start off, I'm gonna give a little background information. Um, this happened after I called the cops on my roommates, this whole thing was kind of going on like since I lived there with them, but it only got really bad after I had already called the cops on them for their wild party. Also, I will say that there was one roommate that I lived with just her when I moved in. She was already there and I lived with just her for like a month before the other two lived with me before they moved in. And she was easygoing and I got along with her well. We weren't like besties or anything, but I didn't really have any problems with her. We got along really well. So it was maybe like a month in. This was probably like maybe late March, early April. These other two girls moved in and they knew each other already. They were like best friends. So they moved in and things seemed good at first. The one of them, she was really easy to get along with too. It was the other one who, I don't know if I wanna call her like a troublemaker, but like, for example, she was the one that started the party where I had to call the cops. The other two wouldn't have started the party initially, but they just went along with what she was already doing. So I will say, I guess she was the source of a lot of the trouble here. Now she had a four month old husky puppy. He was so cute. He was so, so, so cute. But the issue was she didn't really take care of him, train him, spend time with him. And I don't like blame her as much for that as much as I blame her for even having a dog because she was not in a place in her life where she could have a dog. She was an assistant manager at Zaxby's and she was working like 40 hours a week and she had like no time for this dog. She had no time to train him, no time for anything. So he would like chew things if you left your stuff out, like he chewed one of my purses. He chewed a pair of my flip flops and I had to throw them away because they had like bite marks in them. And besides the chewing, um, there were other issues with him. He wasn't uh, potty trained. So it got to where there was like, he would just go inside because she wasn't, when she was around, she wasn't teaching him like, no, this is not okay. Like she wasn't teaching him that. She was just letting him do his thing inside. So it was at a point where I was coming home like every day and I knew there was gonna be poop inside. So, and sometimes pee too. So I would just come inside and like the smell guys, the smell. I would come inside and I would just brace myself. I'd just go, and then I would just go in my room 
you know, I, it was, I was gonna have a big wretch and then I would go into my room. I, or I would hold my breath, I just, you know, cause it was so bad. Sometimes he would poop right by the door when I came in. Sometimes it was in the middle of the kitchen. Sometimes it was out by the balcony door. It was, it, it was really bad. And she would often leave him on the balcony. Like to avoid him doing his thing in the house, she would put him outside on the balcony and just leave him there. And it's like the summer getting to where it's pretty hot. And she would just leave him out there with like no water, just food. And I'm like, and this is where, you know, staff kind of comes in to the apartment staff. They saw the dog out there, but instead of being like, we're gonna call animal control or whatever, they were just like, you need to bring the dog inside. If it's not removed, it will result in a fine. Like they would just, they were gonna fine her for having the dog. And they had already fined us for having my bicycle outside of all things. We're not allowed to keep a bicycle outside. I said, we kept inside? Like, and we're not allowed to have anything out there besides like chairs. No rugs, like the dog crate wasn't allowed out there, no bicycle, no nothing. So the staff was already kind of not really very well organized with any of what was going on. So that was kind of bad. So um, yeah, another issue that was going on besides the dog was these people would often play really loud music and I was often woken up sometimes at three in the morning with really loud music and looking back I was a lot nicer about it than I should have been you know my brother has said before like why are we so nice to people who are mean to us or whatever and I'm like you know what you're right. I mean, I should have been a little more harsh and just been like, dude, it's 3 a.m. Turn your music off. But I was too sweet. I just been like, oh, hey, I'm going to bed. You know, can you turn your music down? Do you mind? You know, I never let on like you woke me up and now I, I wish I would have. But, you know, it's over and done with. But I would just ask them to turn it down and that's the thing. They would turn it down like that much like they would barely turn it down at all and this is where I I don't understand there's something I'm missing here the music is louder than I would want it and it's not even in my room because this is a four bedroom apartment we each have our own bedroom our own bath and then the shared kitchen the living room so I just don't understand the desire to have music that loud. I don't get it, but maybe that's just me. Comment down below if you're in the same boat as me. Um, also comment down below um, why you maybe like to have music that loud. I'm not trying to bash anybody, no shade. I just don't understand, okay? So that was definitely an issue that we had. And another issue, um, besides the cleanliness issues with the dog, there was also just, um, they, they just in general didn't keep the apartment clean. So we were always getting like roaches and because they didn't clean the kitchen there'd be like laundry everywhere and they also they cooked with fry oil which I don't eat that kind of diet again no shade if you eat that way I just prefer to be a little bit healthier so I don't really know the ins and outs of cooking with fry oil but they I guess you can reuse it so they would leave like pots of fry oil in the oven so I'd turn it on like preheat to cook my food or whatever and then they'd be like, oh, there's stuff in the oven to take that out. And I'm like, why would you leave that in the oven? Again, 
no shade. I just don't understand. So all this stuff was just a problem, you know, and I didn't really know, because I never went to college, so I didn't really know how much of this is like unacceptable and how much of it is like, this is college life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know how much of it I needed to just accept that that's not how I like to do things. You know what I'm saying? How much of it was like, this is actually unacceptable. I never really understood that. Okay, now back to the dog. This is where I started seriously thinking like, I don't know if I could do this anymore. Uh, I came home one day, and besides the usual mess from the dog, the couch had been completely destroyed. The dog was just lying there all cute, you know, surrounded by pieces of the couch. He had managed to pull it out from the wall a little bit, and the back of the couch had like wood in it, so he was chewing like he chewed up all the wood there was wood shavings everywhere i have no doubt he ate some of it so i'm like oh my gosh and there was like couch stuffing and there was a chair as well there was like a the furniture that came with the apartment there's the couch and then there was a chair he had torn up this chair too and there was like stuffing everywhere and he probably ate some of that too so i'm like oh my goodness this is awful so then, um, my roommate, whose dog it was, I'm not going to name names or location or any of that, just for privacy's sake, um, she comes in and she was like, oh my gosh, and she started, you know, she kind of had a phone call with her dad, and her dad was kind of coaching her, like, you need to think about getting rid of rid of the dog, you're not in a place right now where you should have a dog, blah blah blah. And she seemed, you know, obviously crushed but open to the idea. And she told me she was gonna go to the office the next day and tell them about the couch, offer to pay for a new one, whatever. And uh, I was thinking, you know, I know how it feels to have to apologize to someone, admit you're wrong, whatever. So I felt for her because she seemed like she was trying to straighten things out. So I was thinking I would go with her to the office. But the next morning came and she hadn't gone yet. And I was about to leave for work. But I didn't know she hadn't gone. I was like, hey, how'd it go at the office, whatever. And she was like, oh, I'm not going. And like she just got out of the shower and she's getting ready for work. So I'm thinking she means like I don't have time right now, I'll go later. I realized after a little bit that she didn't really plan on going at all. After all, she just wasn't gonna own up and wasn't gonna deal with it after all. I'm like, okay, like I don't know what to do. I don't wanna like report if I report her, like I have to live with her. And that's gonna like start a beef, whatever. Like I, I don't know. And I'm still at a point where I'm like, I don't know how much of this I need to just deal with, and how much of this is like unacceptable. Now, right around this time when the couch got torn up, there were also some guys that didn't live there that were coming and crashing on the couch, and they had like a sheet on the couch, they had a sheet over the window so that you know they could sleep and everything. And they were just making themselves at home. And I believe, like, the couch was already torn up. They had just thrown away the loose pieces off the floor and just covered it up with a sheet and they were still, like, living and whatever. So I'm like, this is crazy. And they also had this, like, pit bull puppy that didn't live there. So that's, like, a lease violation because you have to pay pet rent to bring a pet there unless it's an emotional support or service animal. Like, this is crazy. Well, my mom came to visit just because, you know, she wanted to see. She lives out of state and she wanted to come see me. And so she came to visit and she was going to help me kind of organize my room and whatever and kind of 
make it look nicer just because, not that I'm incapable, but it's a very small room that I had. And she's really good at organizing and making it look nice. So I was grateful to have her help, you know? Well, it pretty quickly turned into organizing it so that it would be easier to pack up and get me out of there because she realized, she was like, this is unacceptable, like you need to get out of here. There was, she was doing like organizing and packing while I was at work. I came home from work and there was like a pile of dog do right outside my door. So I told my mom, I'm like, you know, just so you know, if you have to leave the room, there's, you know, right outside my door. Well, my mom, I don't remember if she went to the office or if she called the office, but she reported it. And they later said that, like, I should have been reporting, like, every incident that happened. Like, I should have been reporting. But the thing is, after she reported the dog do, they didn't do anything about it for, like, three days. So, like, what good would it have done? Because we're reporting it now, and you guys aren't doing anything about it. Like, this apartment was not, honestly, very well run, like, at all. So, we're just like, we need to get out. So, my mom helped me pack up. She had to, like, stay an extra day longer than she was planning. Um, just to help me get packed up. And I was staying with her at the Airbnb where she was staying. So we kind of had time to talk about everything and figure out what we were going to do and we went and toured the apartment where I'm in now, which is a way better situation. I I don't have horror stories from this apartment, okay? That That's how good this is, okay? Um, and the rent is cheaper. So we toured here and we really figured out this is going to be a better place if I could just live here instead and we were looking at getting out of my lease now you can't get out of your lease at that other place like unless you die they won't let you out so we ended up trying to, we were trying to do like we want mutual termination no fees whatever they wouldn't like none of that so we ended up having to get a sublease that was like literally the only way that we could get out of this without having to continue to pay them so we had to get a sublease, which is what we ended up doing. Um, we got everything packed up to where I could just load it into a trailer or whatever. And so my mom ended up leaving and then my boyfriend and his family helped me move. It was sometime in July. It was probably like a Friday or a Saturday that we just packed up and we took everything to a storage unit but they were appalled when they came in like my boyfriend had been you know he came over a lot and he knew what was going on but his parents hadn't known so they showed up and they're like this is unacceptable like there was there was poop on the floor like right by the door to where you open the door and it would catch under the door and it would like smear when you open it it was it was awful we had to put the dog out on the porch while we moved everything out so that he wouldn't run off. And my boyfriend's mom had to show the guys who were, you know, making themselves at home on the couch. She had to show them how to give the dog water because the roommate whose dog it was was at home. She's like, here, you know, get some water and just put it outside like this. I'm like, you shouldn't have to show people how to water a dog. That's, that's a huge problem. So, yeah, it was, it was really bad. So I was really glad to get out of there. I kissed that place goodbye and I have never looked back. And I thank God for blessing me with this apartment and for everything he has done to get me through all of that i am very grateful i'm grateful to everyone who had a part in helping me get out of there um if you're watching this thank you um but yeah 
that was part two of my apartment slash roommate horror story series. So that is it for this video. If you, I don't know if I should say enjoyed. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, if you got some form of entertainment out of my misery, give this video a thumbs up. And uh, by the way, see my band-aid guys? Yeah, you wanna guess what I did? I snipped my thumb with scissors today. Yeah, that is not the first time I have cut this thumb with the same pair of scissors either. The last time I did it was like in December and I now have a scar from it. So there you go. I just thought I would share that little tidbit of information that nobody wanted to know, but now you do. So there we go. Anyway, if you got some form of entertainment out of this, please give it a thumbs up. Stay subscribed to my channel. Ring the bell so that you don't miss any time I post a video. I post every Friday. Next week, you will get to see part three in this horror story apartment series. So stay tuned for that. And I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Bye, guys.